So today I'm really excited to have uh, my friend Naveed join us, who's the co-founder and CEO of Flourish. Flourish uh, helps people build lasting habits in a scientific way. And Naveed, through his experience, has been a coach to some major investors as well as entrepreneurs in the blockchain space. So Naveed, welcome. Great to have you. Glad to be here. Great. Uh, so Naveed, just to start with, um, you know, I knew you when you were a consultant at Dahlberg, working in a lot of countries around the world, helping uh, people in emerging markets improve their healthcare and education. Uh, tell me about your journey as an entrepreneur. How did you decide to move from uh, Dahlberg to DeVita to starting your own company? Sure, sure, yeah, absolutely. Well, I, uh, I, you know, I've always had a passion for trying to use my career in a way to make as much social impact as possible and basically help those around me. And that's what uh, originally led me to working in international development. But um, for a variety of reasons, I ended up deciding to focus on the domestic market in the US and healthcare. And, and uh, spending some time at DeVita, I really got to learn the way the healthcare industry works from the inside out. Um, and what my biggest takeaway was from that experience was that at the core of the issue in American healthcare is the fact that we don't know how to build and form lasting habits. Uh, and that is essentially the reason why um, you know, people struggle from obesity, diabetes, hypertension, you know, all, of, all of the major chronic illnesses that account for 86% of US healthcare spend are predicated on the fact that we don't know how to form and build lasting habits. Wow, mm -hmm. wow, that's amazing. So, uh, so then uh, you you realize this problem. It's contributing to eighty six percent of healthcare spend. It's uh, causing people a lot of anxiety. How did you decide personally to to take this leap onto entrepreneurship? Sure, sure. Well, you know, my my personal experience with regards to habits actually comes you know goes back you know twenty years, right? So I I struggled from with depression actually um, since I was about 15 and uh, it was undiagnosed for almost 20 years um, or about about 10 years sorry and the uh, uh, and and through that process of having depression um, so many of my own routines and habits formed in a way that were just really unhealthy yeah. um, most notably sleep yeah. <laughs> like uh, you know, I, it's funny because when I was working at Dahlberg, I did have the opportunity to go travel around the world and um, work with very senior officials in, in you know, various developing countries. Um, but I also couldn't get out of bed in the morning um, because I was struggling uh, with uh, you know, being sleep deprived, yeah. being jet lagged, or just you know, having a, a, a flare up of my depression. Yeah. Um, and so I'm sitting here in you know, Ethiopia hitting snooze every morning yeah. for 90 minutes um, while I'm like late to my meeting with like the Minister of Agriculture. Like so it was um, it was a really it was something that really plagued me uh, throughout my my professional career uh, and and I finally decided a few years ago that you know this has got to stop. That really prompted me to dive deep and try to understand okay what do we know about habits? How do they really form? What are, you know, what's the latest psychology, neuroscience, behavioral economics tell us about, um, or tell me specifically about what I can do to change uh, this pattern right. that I've been playing out for, you know, every day, every morning for yeah. the last 10 years. Um, I, I started by trying to do something really, very really simple. I said, okay, I'm going to take a glass of water and I'm going to put it next to my phone. And... My aim is to embed a routine where I just take a drink of water every morning after I hit snooze. I was still allowed to go back to bed. Yeah. That, was, that was the deal I made myself, with myself. And originally, my intention was that this, this glass of water routine would be kind of like breadcrumbs. I was going to move the glass of water from, from you know, next to my phone to like the doorway to down the hall yeah. so that it was like basically so close to the bathroom that yeah. it would be, there'd be no option not to do that. But what ended up happening was really fascinating. Um, about after about a w using using the techniques um, uh, uh, that you know are come out of BJ Fogg's research, I was able to um, embed this drinking water routine within about a week. Okay, um, and and then within about a week later than that, I just stopped hitting snooze. Interesting. I just stopped yeah. hitting snooze altogether. Um, 
And, 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 at, and at first I didn't quite understand what would happen, but when I dug into the research a bit more, what I realized was I essentially kind of overloaded the circuit. Like I had this cycle that I'd been playing out for years and years and years, and by just simply adding one additional step to that cycle, it, you know, the, it couldn't, couldn't hold the weight of yeah. basically drinking this water, and it kind of created this wedge that broke the chain that I'd been kind of like shackled to for, for 10 years of my life. And, and this like was life changing yeah. for me because to now all of a sudden be able to like, you know, get up with my alarm meant I had an extra hour and a half in the morning, meant I, all of my other routines kind of just fell into place. I now had time for a regular rec exercise routine. I ate breakfast every morning. I could be at work at 8 a.m. reliably, which meant that at six o'clock or seven o'clock the night before, I you know, wasn't afraid that I wasn't getting my work done, for, you know, and, I, and I, could, yeah. I could go home. Um, I, you know, and also just like the shame. There was so much shame that was associated with yeah. this, this routine that was embedded for so long, yeah. and I was able to just kind of break all that out. Um, and, and you know, once that happened, I was like, wow, this is, this is really fascinating. I wonder if this will work on other people. Yeah. You know, I tried it on 10 friends. We did all different types of routines, worked well enough for them. Um, then we started charging for it and kind of a business was born from there. Yeah. That's amazing. So, so it seems like you helped identify a seed and fix that seed and planted that seed that then had ripple effects uh, across the rest of your life and that's the, the basis for Flourish. That's exactly right. Um, yeah. So what are some of the other habits that people uh, form uh, using your help and, and, and with Flourish? Sure, sure. There's about three categories that we typically find that people are interested in. Um, one category is around health and wellness. Uh, a second is around uh, productivity. And then the third is around learning a new skill. So health and wellness are kind of the things that you might imagine, um, sleep, exercise related habits, eating less sugar, meditation yeah. is very popular. Um, you know, the, the productivity ones, um, a really, really common one is uh, um, planning uh, and strategic thinking, like right. carving out time in the morning for that. Um, uh, and then in terms of uh, uh, learning a new skill, you know, things like learning a, a foreign language, practicing the guitar, um, these are all things that people awesome. have used the system for. Great. So Naveed, what's next for Flourish? What's, what's coming up in the next six months? Are there any um, announcements that you'd like to make? Well, we've just you know, launched our uh, kind of flagship product uh, project right now, which was the kind of the Flourish program. We, um, you know, we help you build lasting habits in 10 weeks uh, using one-on-one -on -one coaching. Uh, the, uh, you know, we've had incredible results thus far. Um, we grew over the past uh, you know, a couple of months about 40% a week, every single week, to the extent that we kind of hit capacity. And we actually had to, um, unfortunately, you know, paw take a pause on, on being able to deliver the service. But um, in the next couple of weeks, we'll be able to kind of relaunch and put ourselves in a position to just kind of help more people um, you know, establish those, those habits that are going to make them, uh, you know, that are going to make them, you know, flourish in life. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Well, Naveed, thank you so much for taking some time out of your busy day to join us. We really appreciate it. And thanks again for your advice as well. Absolutely. So it was great to be here.